One day in 1967, a man left his cabin, hiked deep into the mountains of Washington State, and shot a grizzly bear. It was the last legal kill here, and one of the last bears. Just one year later, this valley became part of the brand new North Cascades National Park. Nestled in a 10,000 square mile blanket of wild land, mountains, rivers, and lakes. In fact, one of the wildest places left in the Wild West. Since that time, only fleeting glimpses of these ghost bears and mysterious photographs from a few people each year. Today, we think there are fewer than 10 alive, struggling against the odds. It's a pattern that was repeated across the USA. Grizzly bears were left in only the wildest places. To many in Washington state, these bears represent what's left of the wild in America, and they want to see them back. Well, certainly, they're part of the, uh, part of the Northwest. Awesome, it'd be amazing. It'd be cool, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. They were here once before. Bring them back. After decades of research and education, Wildlife agencies are working to restore these North Cascades grizzly bears. But how do you bring bears back when they've almost disappeared? The science is pretty clear on that. It's not an easy process, but it's a really fascinating one. When you have almost no bears left, like in the North Cascades, there's this process called augmentation, where you take bears from a healthy population and you add them to an area where the bears are low in number to prevent their local extinction. And we can learn from Montana where it's happening right now. I want to meet with some of the community members there, people who live and work and recreate in grizzly bear country, and the biologists behind the augmentation program. The program has been ongoing. Montana, grizzly country. Wayne Caseworm is a grizzly bear biologist. He's been on the front line in northwest Montana for over 30 years and has some fascinating stories to tell, including one about a bear he named Irene. Irene is the basis of this entire story in the Cabinet Mountains. It's clear this was a very special bear to Wayne and she has one of the most incredible stories of any translocated bear. But how do you catch a bear like Irene? This is where it gets interesting. This is Tim Manley. He captures bears near Glacier National Park to translocate them to Wayne in the Cabinet Mountains to the northwest. How long have you been working on bears now? Oh, I've been working on grizzlies for 32 years. Tim has become an authority on catching grizzly bears. The traps that we use are big round metal tubes. They have a door on one end that slides open, and at the other end we tie bait. And when the bear enters the trap, pulls on the roadkill deer, the door slams shut. We put up remote cameras so we can monitor to see what comes in in case we don't catch something, but maybe a bear will come and check it out. It's tough to outsmart these intelligent animals. It can take weeks. And even for Tim, it's a bit more of an art than a science. So we're back at our grizzly bear trap location from yesterday. And sure enough, it looks like Tim has got some footage of the young male that came and explored and he stuck his head into the trap, took the gut pile, so at least we've fed a young bear for the night. So let's see what Tim's got on this camera here. We got a lot of photos of a young bear. Came in and took the gut pile off. Quite gingerly took it, didn't he? He, yep. he looks yep. suspicious, eh? Yep, there he goes. When things go well, Tim gets his perfect bear. Hey Wayne, this is Tim, it's about... Usually what first happens is I get a phone call from Tim that he's got a bear that is captured that he thinks is a good candidate. For bears that we want to move to the Cabinet Mountains, we want bears that have no history of conflict with people. 
two to four to five years of age. We anesthetize the bear, take a variety of weights, measurements. 321.5. 61 and a half. Five and a half. Six and a half. DNA and also fit up. And we fit a radio collar on the bear. We take the utmost care when we have these bears in captivity. You care about these bears? Yep, yeah. I care about them greatly, yes. Yeah. Once the bear is recovered, oftentimes that same day, we will take it out to our release site, open the trap door, and off the bear goes. It's 1993. As Irene is released into the cabinets, no one knows how it will go. She's at the center of a pioneering effort to save her species here, and she's just two years old. But just like in the North Cascades, this is about people too. How did they feel when Irene and other bears arrived? There were a number of people who came into this whole process very skeptical about things. There was a lot of opposition. Why are they wanting to bring grizzly bears back into this country? If I do not want to make my children afraid of them, yeah. but they need to be aware. Fear of the unknown, you know, dragged out of our beds at night by grizzly bears. There were a lot of folks that they weren't very excited about this idea. And that's why we took a year of public education and outreach to the public before we ever let a bear go. Wayne was like the perfect guy for that. You took the kids out into the fields with Wayne at, at times. Eh? We did. We would spend actually a whole day up in the Cabinet Mountains wilderness. The guy is just an absolute knowledge base. Straightforward, candid, uh, honest with the people of Libby. Today, people are far more understanding of grizzly bear management than they were when we started. It's amazing how fast that turned around. Really? They, they saw that it wasn't going to have an, an enormous impact on their lives. This is a pretty woodsy group. They're not really all that afraid. I see it just only as a positive for the wilderness and for the people around here. We've done a lot of work to, uh, again, bring our community along and, and get them used to the idea of, of having bears and seeing bears occasionally, and, and that's important as well. And when I'm in the wilderness and I see a grizzly bear, I'm just thrilled. I mean, it's excitement and a success story. It's, it really is so normal to me that I don't even really think about it. People just really are proud mm. of the fact that we were willing to share our space with these creatures who clearly belong here. Mm -hmm. They inspire um, something within, something deep inside. Do you know how, you, how little kids, you hear them giggle and laugh? That's how I felt when I saw it because it made me feel so good. We put 19 bears in the, in the cabinets now, dating back to 1990. Few, if any, of these bears have turned up in conflict situations. When they're wearing a radio collar and when they've got ear tags in their ears, I've had relatively few sightings of any of these animals. I do a lot of monitoring from, typically from aircraft. We do some ground monitoring too, to see where the bear's going. Irene lost her radio collar after just two and a half years in 1995. So Wayne was unable to track her. It was anyone's guess if she would survive. I think it's been largely successful, but there's been some bumps in the road along the way as well. And unfortunately, they don't all live. They were the underdog, and, and is, can we even hope that they will you know, be able to raise a family here? But no matter how much Wayne can track and follow a bear, he can't always save their lives. 16 years after she was released into her new Cabinet Mountains home, she was killed by a hunter. She was 18 years old. Perhaps this makes the return of the grizzly bear even more important in the North Cascades. The North Cascades could easily support 200 grizzly bears, but it might take 100 years to reach that number. And it emerges that bears like Irene can really turn things around. She was missing for nine years, and it turns out that in that time, she had become a mother. This is a picture of Irene and two of her yearling offspring. These two right here are, are those females. So Wayne began her family tree and then discovered more. We have genetic evidence that she produced at least 10 cubs 
of her own wow. that are there. And then this one, who's this? And this one is Irene's first litter of cubs, and that would be this particular bear right here, okay. 2019, born in 1997. She has two cubs with her in that picture, that's and that's nice. these two cubs right here, a male and a female. So this meant that even more incredibly, Irene had also become a grandmother to at least 13 cubs. So these are Irene's grand cubs. Oh, great. A couple of bears like Irene, and yeah. man, you got a population growing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> she has a family tree. Isn't that crazy? Is that a girl? <laughs> That's a success. Yeah. That's success right there. Holy cow. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. This is a mama grizzly bear, and not only a mama, but a grandma as well. Do you like bears? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do too. You do? <laughs> do you? <laughs> Accommodating these big wild animals on the landscape takes courage and sometimes just the right place and just the right bear. It's a turning point here in the North Cascades, a chance to ignore the myths and folklore about this magnificent animal and do the right thing. Research shows there is plenty of food and plenty of space for a healthy population and that people want them back. Biologists know that bears won't bounce back on their own in the Cascades. These mountains will need their own Irenes if the bears are to come home. In the North Cascades, we can right the wrongs. Imagine it for a moment. Places as wild as the North Cascades are becoming rarer in today's world. This beautiful part of the American West is a success story waiting to happen for the grizzly bear and for us. Because after all, it's not just about the grizzly bear. It's about the wild places we all need. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have had you in class. Well, you will behave. No, I wasn't. No, oh. <laughs>